Kong's workplaces, known for their dynamism, are also breeding grounds for power imbalances. Sexual harassment here is not just an issue of gender or a manifestation of power abuse. From subtle innuendos to overt advances, the spectrum of harassment remains a hidden yet pervasive threat. Now, get ready for a dark towards sexual harassment in the workplace through Hong Kong today. The first place we went to was Pui Chen Middle School. It is a famous school in Hong Kong that has cultivated talents in various fields. Here we delve into the fascinating theory of claims making and its relevance to a famous case that has captivated public attention. This is the story of Lu Lai Yu, who courageously shared her junior high school experience on Facebook, shining a light on the issue of sexual assault. Taking advantage of the student's trust, her former coach took Lu to his home and sexually assaulted her. After more than 10 years, Lu had the courage to report this deviant behavior by another respected celebrity. Lu's disclosure holds significant implications in terms of claims making. As a well-known claim maker, she utilized social media as a platform to bring attention to her traumatic experience. Her status as a celebrity added news value to the story, capturing the media's attention and sparking widespread public interest. This case not only encouraged more victims to come forward and share their stories, but it also ignited a broader conversation about self-protection and social justice. Louis' bravery in reporting a deviant behavior by another respected celebrity has prompted society to examine the prevalence of sexual harassment and the need for change. To Louis' claims making, this case has become a catalyst for raising awareness and promoting social justification. She raised awareness of self-protection and promoted social justification. This case serves as a reminder that no institution or individual is immune to such incidents and it underscores the need for ongoing efforts to combat sexual assault. The second location we visited was near Janice Wong's former studio in Cam Team. Here we will explore the fear of crime theory with the case of Janice Wong. Janice Wong, a well-known figure in the photography industry, operates his studio in his own home in Cam Team. Wong's reputation for his exceptional work makes it challenging for his victims to suspect any wrongdoing. However, allegations have come to light, with six women accusing Dennis Wong, the industry-renowned photographer, of sexually assaulting them. Noah was attending a photo shoot when Wong crossed Noah's boundaries without her consent, causing Noah to immediately leave the photo session. Another victim, referred to as a Matt Wong through Facebook, in 2013, Wong invited A to his tenement friend in Wampoa to view his design work. During the visit, Wang made unwelcome advances towards A, prompting her to request to leave. Furthermore, artist K encountered Dennis Wang at a party in 2016. As others were leaving, Wang took advantage of the situation and subjected K to unwanted touching and harassment. These incidents align with the theory of fear of crime. As described by Kirikos, Eshholes, and Garths, the media's portrayal of these sexual harassment incidents create a heightened sense of worry among models within the industry. The victims, all models with similar occupations and external features, represent a group that the public may hold stereotypes about. Gunter argues that when individuals lack direct experience, indirect sources of information become more influential. The cases of sexual harassment endured by these models can trigger anxiety and fear among other models who have not experienced such incidents themselves, as they fear they may become victims as well. These incidents serve as a reminder that media coverage can influence readers, especially specific groups, to be overly fearful of the possibility of crime. For the third dark tour, let's follow the perspective of a flight attendant. In this part, we delve into the theory of gender and crime and an incident that highlights the vulnerability of female staff working in confined spaces. 
Fang Waiyi experienced sexual harassment during her first day of work as a flight attendant. Unfortunately, the manager who witnessed the incident did not provide assistance, leaving Fang with a lingering shadow that influenced her decision to wear pants for future work assignments. For flight attendants, societal expectations and the male gaze have long perpetuated the notion that physical attractiveness is a necessary requirement for their job, despite it not being a legitimate necessity. When news reports on such incidents emerge, they also focus on the victims' descriptions, emphasizing their clothing choices and appearances as potential catalysts for these cases. This narrative shift diverts attention away from the perpetrators and perpetuates victim-blaming tendencies. It is crucial to shift the focus towards holding offenders accountable rather than scrutinizing victims' choices. We also compared this case with the previously mentioned case of modeling. Flight attendants operate within companies with clear rules and regulations. Hong Kong Airlines, for example, has started addressing this issue through measures aimed at teaching employees how to handle harassment and abandoning the objectification of cabin crew. On the other hand, modeling is a freelance profession with no clear industry-wide structure or regulations. Unspoken rules and regulations within the modeling industry further contribute to internal disorder and hinder effective response to harassment incidents. These incidents highlight the urgent need to address gender-based victimization in various professions. By challenging stereotypes, promoting awareness, and establishing supportive frameworks, we can create safer environments that empower individuals and foster gender equality. On the last tour, we went to the North District Hospital. This particular incident took place in a hospital setting where an anesthesiologist repeatedly slapped and touched the chests of several female doctors. The media played a crucial role in informing the public about the details of the case and highlighting the role of the criminal justice system in addressing sexual harassment incidents. The hospital involved, North District Hospital, operates under clear administrative structures and rules and regulations. It is supervised by the Medical Council of Hong Kong, ensuring that sexual harassment cases are promptly addressed. The council considers the nature and severity of the offenses and imposes strict penalties on the individuals involved, safeguarding the rights and interests of the victims. Comparing this case to the previously mentioned incidents involving flight attendants and modeling, we can observe differing internal structures within these professions. In contrast to airlines, hospitals have well-defined administrative structures and regulations in place. They are equipped to handle sexual harassment cases efficiently, ensuring that relevant witnesses and evidence can be examined to impose strict penalties on the offenders. By addressing such misconduct through effective investigation, disciplinary measures, and supportive structures, we can create safer environments that protect the rights and will being of individuals across various professions. It is essential to challenge stereotypes, raise awareness, and establish comprehensive frameworks to combat gender-based victimization and promote gender equality in all sectors of society.
，媽咪會喊啊，爹哋好嬲啊。阿妹又会真系好心痛我家姐啊！我啲最难系同屋企人讲嗰一下咯。立法会议员马逢国透露，几个星期之前亦都收到一名投诉信，指有运动员足性侵。佢话投诉信入面并冇披露受害人嘅身份，已经同相关体育机构跟进。We can't all be asking for it. I am here to give you permission to be angry. This reality might not have to be our reality. There's a human behind this. Someone who was very hurt and wrong. Honestly, I was furious. I had had a man grope me in front of multiple colleagues, and I was tired of wondering if it was something I wore. I was tired of wondering if it was a vibe I was giving. I felt that if I can speak out, maybe if I just stand up. Then someone else will stand up with me. There wasn't a, a place for us to report these experiences, but I sure did talk about it a lot. I was afraid of the retaliation. I know the power of patriarchy. I know what men can do when they're angry. They did everything that they could to prevent me from raising my concerns further. They asked me if there were other girls who he has done this to, and can I go get them? I had to show them that I wasn't lying. Taking it to my Instagram and you know, pulling up and sexy photos as if that kind of like, discredited me. Friends in Hong Kong, in Japan, it's an international movement. I feel like the day that I spoke up and I said you are a sexual harasser, I changed.